the April 15th meeting of the Sports Authority Finance Committee to order. It is our opinion that the items on today's agenda constitute essential business of this body and that meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. Are there any objections? Hearing none. Chairman Glassmeyer. Yes. Glenn, Glenn says that he is on and that he can hear us, but we can't hear him. So I wonder um, if one of the attendees, there's some call-in users in the attendee list. So if Quentin or Metro ITS can help him with audio, what's that'd be great. What's his number, Monica? I can, because I can, that's how it's showing. They call it, it's probably one of these call-in users. Is he starting 972? 477 419 or 403. 477. So the 477 call in user 11 is Director Farner. Needs to be moved to panelist. Yeah, uh, call in users cannot be moved to panelists. So what do we need to do to get him? To the pants. Can you all reach out to to him? Can you text him and work with him to get him in, please? Monica, do we want to wait? Let's go. Let's go ahead and get started while they do him into the panelist. Okay. All right, uh, today's meeting is being live streamed by Metro ITS on Metro Network One. Uh, now we'll do a roll call for the committee members. So I will reach out, say everyone's name and just reply yes, reply with an I or yes. Director Ben. Hi. I'm working with Director Farner, Director Harrison. Hi. And Director Hogan is unable to attend. He is out of the county this morning. All right, thank you, and we'll hopefully have uh, Director Farner here momentarily. All right, um, first item up for consideration are the minutes from the March 11th, 2021 meeting. Um, everyone should have re received the SharePoint link, which includes the minutes from the March meeting. Are there any questions or comments? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the March 11th meeting. So moved. Thank you, Margaret. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, sir. Frank, any discussion? All in favor, and I'll do a roll call vote. Director Bem? Aye. Director Harrison? Aye. Did we get Director Farner yet? We looks like yes, we, I'm, we do. I'm on here. Um, I am calling in but i'm on the i'm on the app so if i drop off it's because i'll have to get where i can reconnect so i have spotty coverage so that's the reason i called in rather than than through the ip but okay. i'm here and vote yes thank you sir appreciate it all right motion carries uh the next item is consideration of uh, is a consideration of approval of a re resolution approving an agreement for a, to grant an easement for the concert <clears throat> pardon me the conservation greenway uh, there's a request for metro parks and cindy harrison assistant director of parks greenways open spaces open space division is here to present the request so cindy i will turn it over to you yes, yes. good morning Thank you for uh, for having me here this morning. Our request is um, just as you explained a request to enter into an agreement uh, between Metro and the Sports Authority for a Greenway conservation easement over part part of the existing Greenway um, that's in place now and a new segment that would be constructed by um, Portman Holdings, which would essentially allow the Greenway to be open to the public daily, whereas now there are closures because of you know, operational procedures with 
the games and events that happened at the sound stadium and um, and the public being on site. You should have in your packet. Yes, thank you. Um, so if you orient on 4th Avenue, everything to the left is existing Greenway. The portion to the right that's in brown uh, would be the new segment of Greenway. And just above that in, I don't know if you all can see my cursor, probably not, um, in kind of the pale beige color is the existing trail on that side. So the new trail alignment would be what you're seeing in the brown and the easement, which you also have um, the proposed easement, you have that in your packet would cover that new newly aligned greenway. So today what we have before you is a request to approve the easement that would overlay um, the future greenway alignment. Ms. Harrison? Yes. Um, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Obviously, no, no, no. And you've got you've given us a lot. So, um, but can you just take us again? I see Fourth Avenue. I see Third Avenue. Yes. I see. I see the roundabout. Okay. Obviously, I see the park. Is the there's a light brown and then there's a dark brown. So, kind of take me through again what the Sports Authority owns and what you're asking for one more time, if you don't mind. Certainly, no, I don't mind at all. If we start at Fifth Avenue, and the okay. darker the darker brown, it's kind of a peachy brown, is existing greenway, it's the existing alignment. And we really don't propose any changes to that up until the point where it gets just above 4th Avenue, the cul-de-sac where you see the hatch. Correct. And at that point, the dark brown will be new greenway, a new greenway path. Just above that, you'll see a blue line with little white squares. That's fencing. And just above that, in a lighter uh, tan color, is the greenway that's existing right now. Uh -huh. So the proposed easement would overlay the existing segment of greenway between 5th Avenue and 4th and also overlay the new greenway proposed between 4th and 3rd Avenue. So when I see green on here, <laughs> I see the path. Do you see what I'm saying? I see the peach brown from uh -huh. the, I'm talking about not the big brown part to the right of 4th and, and between 4th and 3rd. I'm talking about the path, the peachy path. From fifth to third, uh -huh. that's an existing path, right? From fifth to third, I'll, you see. Come on, yeah, I so wish you could see. I wish I could share my Pardon. cursor with you. Pardon me, uh, Cindy, and and uh, this is Kim Hawkins, and I do have a plan that I could share that very clearly shows the easement area in yellow over the entire area that would be the easement if that is helpful. Wow. I can. Of course you can. <laughs> so are you able to, to insert that so I can see it? If, the rest of the if I am allowed if I am allowed to share, I could I could do that. I don't know. I think if that would be Quentin who would need to allow me to share. And so far, it does not appear that I can share, but. Um, Kim, is it a document that you can send to Melissa and Quentin so that they can put it up quickly? I would, I would be glad to do that, Monica. And then uh, it might be clear to also say that this easement goes between the property line for um, the development that's there on Plan South and it extends up to that fence line that Cindy was showing you, which is where the blue is. But I will send that right now to, uh, I have Quentin's 
um, email. So I'll do that right now. Thank you. Thank you. While they are doing that, um, you know, I would say that I've had a, a couple of conversations with the sounds and they are supportive of the grant of the easement. Um, Doug, I don't know if there's anything that you want to add at this time. You may not, and that's okay. Um, but I think it's important to, um, to note the sounds support of this. Yeah, Monica, just real quick from my side it, to re repeat what was said by, um, Cindy at the intro, um, this would allow the Green Bay to stay open all the time, regardless of whether there was a sounds game or event going on. And I know that's been a, a concern that's been voiced to us and to other members of Metro uh, over the last five years as we've been open as our ballpark. So, uh, yeah, w I've been part of the process as they've looked at this and we're comfortable with everything they would like to do from our side. And that has been sent to Quentin. Hopefully, uh, Quentin, you've received that. Uh, this is Paul with ITS. I can make you uh, the presenter if you'd like. Uh, that would be helpful. Let's do if, that. That's if fine. has not received it, I'd be fine to do that. Thank you, Paul. Second. Um, you should be seeing my screen now. I see it. Yes. So uh, the yellow area may most clearly define the area that we are referring to as the easement. Cindy, I don't know if you want to speak from this. Um, sure. Although, Kim, it doesn't show the entire easement. Once you get, it's not really delineating the continued easement from fourth over to fifth. No, this is this is the easement that would be uh, from this uh, the, from this property line up to the um, the sounds fence line between third and fourth. So, is it a similar area like this? Uh, yes, from fourth to fifth, this kind of configuration all the way to fourth to fifth is that what it you're is it encompasses um the linear dark kind of peachy brown uh -huh. as you go it encompasses that in a very similar way that this yellow yeah. segment does it goes up to the fence line and um runs alongside the linear brown to the left yes that's very helpful thank you to both of you all certainly that, that helps me visualize it thanks you're welcome Thank you. All right, Cindy, anything else you'd like to present? Yeah, essentially, that is it. Uh, you do have a participation agreement in just for informational purposes about how the trail will be built. That's an agreement that would be between Metro and um, Portman Holdings um, as to how we would go forward. But the graphic that you just saw pretty much explains the alignment of that trail. Um, and Portman is is offering to construct that uh, at their cost. So it's really a great participation between all four groups here today. All right, any other questions from the committee for the developers for Metro Parks, the Sounds, Ports Authority staff? Mr. Chair, I have a motion. All right. Motion. Uh, I really appreciate all the effort and the cooperation that's gone into this request for the easement. It sounds like a wonderful thing for our city, and I move approval. Is there a second? I second. Thank you. All right, we'll have a roll call. Uh, any discuss? Any other discussion? All right, we'll have a roll call vote. Director Bim. Aye. Director Farner. Aye. And Director Harrison. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. Motion passes.
Next item up is a consideration of approval of a resolution approving a second amendment to the agreement with Kimmelhorn for design services for infrastructure improvements related to the Nashville Major League's soccer stadium project at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Monica is going to Monica Bucknotson is going to kick this one off for us. Okay, yes, I do want to talk a little bit about it. And I know that ITS is working with Melissa to um, to take to give her hosting capability again. So when that happens, then we'll be able to get the resolution up on the screen. But in May of 2019, the authority entered into an agreement with Kimley Horn to provide design services for the infrastructure improvements related to the MLS stadium at the fairgrounds. The contract had a guaranteed maximum price of 1.5 million and was focused on infrastructure improvements. These were it's a lot of streetscape improvements, grading, drainage, pavement, some street winding, bridge, um, roadway lighting systems and utility improvements. And then in October of last year in 2020, the Sports Authority voted to approve an amendment to that agreement for some additional work in the amount of $399,400. And that was for some additional concept development and construction coordination, survey needs. Um, I think there was some additional utility planning and bike and pedestrian access. So I think that context is helpful and important. So now we're back again, there's a proposed resolution that you can see on the screen now for a second amendment to the contract for construction, engineering, and inspection services, CEI. And our project manager, Jim Pashofsky, is going to talk about that. Okay, thanks, Mona. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, the initial Kimley Horn contract, like Monica said in the amendment, was for design services. This particular amendment, uh, as she mentioned, is for construction, engineering, and inspection services during the construction phase. Uh, these are typical on uh, all commercial projects. It's for third party uh, engineering and inspections of the work as it goes in. And these services include uh, construction inspection services on a daily basis, uh, minor design revisions, utility coordination, surveying, earthwork calculations, materials testing, and those kind of things. And these are typically covered, uh, these are usually directly for the owner on the contract, and they're part of the soft cost, they're not part of construction. And we've had these budgeted in the project since its inception. And this amendment is for, uh, to enter into a purchase order for these services and these will be billed on a unit rate and hourly basis monthly. Um, and yeah, that's that's where we are. The, uh, the proposal you have before you uh, it is within the dollars we had budgeted for this initially. And I'll be glad to enter, uh, answer any questions. And I believe uh, reps from Kimmy Horn and Reagan Smith may be on as well. Thank you, Jim. Any questions from the committee? I just wonder why it wasn't in the original contract if it's what's typically done. That's what I'm having a hard time understanding. Oh, because the yes, ma'am, the initial RFP was for design services. Right. And, and typically you wouldn't include these in a design services contract. Okay, so when we did the first amendment, why wasn't it in that one then? Those were for additional design services. This is okay. for engineering and inspection. Okay, and so we don't need to go out for procurement for this, even though you're doing something different than the original contract. Uh, well, typically we would go to Metro vendors for these services. Uh, however, there weren't contracts in place at the time. Are you anticipating any more amendments? Uh, no, ma'am. And the it's budgeted to be paid by whom? Metro? This is, this is coming out of the infrastructure budget, yes. Okay. And there's a line item that we've had, we've had allocated for these services all along. Okay, I have no other questions. Thank you, Margaret. 
Any any other questions from the committee? All right, hearing none, I'll I'd like to entertain a motion to recommend the approval of, of a resolution approving an amendment to the agreement with Kimley Horn for design services for infrastructure improvements related to the National Major League's soccer stadium project at National Fairgrounds. We have a motion. I move approval. Is there a second? Is there a second? Margaret or I believe that was Frank. So Glenn or Margaret, do I have a second? I see Glenn, you're on mute. Margaret, you're you're not on mute. So I seconded, but I'm happy to go either way. <laughs> Didn't, couldn't hear your second. Sorry. Didn't, I'm sorry. I, I, okay. That's okay. I good. probably was on mute. All I, good. I second. We have, a, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All right. We will take a roll call vote. Director Ben. Aye. Director Farner. Aye. And Director Harrison. Aye. Thank you all. All right. Next up. We have a consideration of approval of a resolution approving the authorization, issuance, and sale of not exceeding 35 million of federally taxable public facility revenue funding bonds. These are for the East Bank Stadium Project, Series 2021A of the Sports Authority of the Metro Metropolitan Government of Davidson, Nashville and Davidson County, approving a supplemental trust indenture relating to the bonds pledging certain revenues of the authority to the payment of the bonds, approving a refunding escrow agreement and authorizing the preparation and distribution of an official statement in connection with the sale of the bonds. It's a mouthful. Margaret and Ben, you probably got more of that than I did. All right, I'm gonna turn this over to Monica for some more details. Okay, well, this is, as you can see, the first of three resolutions that the board will be considering this morning. Um, related to the Sports Authority Series 2021 Revenue Refunding Bonds. And Michelle Bosch, our Metro Treasurer, and Metro Bond Council Jeff Oldham with Bass, Berry, and Sims are here, along with several other members of the Metro Bond team, including Margaret Darby, um, to walk you through um, some of the documents. I don't, I don't know if Jeff or Michelle is kicking this off. This is Jeff Oldham. Um, good, good morning. Um, so, um, you know what this what this is is refinancing the mortgage to save money. That's what all three things uh, are. These three resolutions. And so the first is for Nissan Stadium. And so the way you refinance the mortgage is you um, you issue a new series of bonds, uh, and you use the proceeds to pay off. In this case, three series of bonds. Um, some 2012 bonds. 2014 bonds and your 2015 uh, loan that you guys took out from Pinnacle Finance Stadium Improvements. And the net effect of it is, is, you know, the interest rate, the debt service on these new bonds is less than the debt service on the old bonds. That's really all that's going on. Um, the resolution authorizes uh, that transaction and authorize a handful of documents to be executed to make, to make that refinance happen. Um, the first one is a, a supplemental indenture, <clears throat> and and each of these you're going to see these same documents on each deal. Each of these um, these projects was initially uh, sort of the debt is initially documented with an indenture, and every time a new series of bonds is issued, there's a supplemental indenture that just describes the terms of these new bonds, and so that's what that first exhibit is. Uh, the second exhibit is a bond, the form of a bond purchase agreement. These bonds will be sold in the public markets through an underwriting team um, led by um, First Horizon, Fifth Third, and Drexel, uh, Drexel Hamilton. Three, that's, that's your underwriting team. The bond purchase agreement is a contract between you and the underwriters uh, that sort of memorializes how the sale of bonds happens. Um, the third document is a refunding escrow agreement. Um, in, in all, almost 
all of these three deals, with the exception of your pinnacle loan, none of these bonds can be redeemed immediately. And so we've got to find a place to park the proceeds of the new bonds until they can be used to pay off old bonds. And, and a refunding escrow agreement is, is, is how you do that. And so um, Regions Bank in uh, two instances and U.S. Bank in a third instance will be your escrow agent and they'll hold those funds. It's it's you don't have to fool with it. That's the beauty of it. At closing, the money goes into the escrow, and then flows out of the escrow to off the old bonds. Um, the last exhibit is uh, the form of uh, an official statement. Uh, this is the prospectus that uh, that's sent out to potential investors to to offer the bonds for sale, and it describes the authority, it describes Metro, it describes the project, the plan of finance, uh, and things like that. And so. That's the, that's the package of stuff that's here for for this first resolution, which again is for the Nissan Stadium deal. Um, so that's that's sort of what's in front of you. I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Uh, I believe Steve Johnson from Hilltop Securities is on. If you've got questions about the you know the numbers themselves and the and the magnitude of the savings. Thank you, sir. Any questions from the committee? I have a couple, if it's okay, uh, John, of uh, Mr. Oldham. Uh, so yeah, yeah. what is the amount that we owe presently on the bonds? Well, so... Um, on, on the stadium. Sure. So, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need Steve's help. So so what this authorizes, you know, I'm, I'm going to take round numbers, about $35 million uh, for funding. That basically is what you have outstanding under the 2012, 2014, and 2015 series. The only additional series is the 2013 series. Steve, I don't know if you have that number. Yeah, that's what I'm pulling up right now here, Jeff. Just give me one second. Yeah. And while he's pulling that up, these will, when we refinance, they'll they'll still they'll be paid by when? When do the when will the bonds be? Paid? The bonds be paid, the refinance bonds. They'll be paid on the same schedule as they okay. are currently paid. So we're not like, we're not taking a 15 year mortgage and taking it to a 30. Okay. You know, we, we're, we're going to maintain the schedule. Is that 2028? Tell me, I don't know what day is, what you uh, the, the final maturity of all the outstanding bonds is 20, well, fiscal 2034. And the, okay. the outstanding amount on the 13 B's is uh, 11.8 million. So okay. all in, you're at about forty, you know, forty-seven million dollars of Nissan Stadium debt outstanding, roughly. So, so we have the 2013 series bond still in place that we're not, we're not doing anything with those bonds, right? That's correct. Correct. Okay. And the other bonds, the thirty-five million, will be mature in 2034, right? Well, and so you, the, the way to think about that, though, is that's that's the maturity schedule. And so the way bonds, you know, bonds mature in each year over the course of that schedule. Uh -huh. So there will be some bonds that mature in 2034, but you'll be paying them off all along the way. But that's right. And the series 2013 series, 11.8 million, they, when does that mature? In fiscal 25. Oh, and what are the revenues pledged for that? All of them, all of these bonds, particularly once we take. So the Pinnacle loan was structured a little differently, and I won't go into that because we're getting ready to convert it over to all of all of your Nissan Stadium bonds are exactly the same way. You you've right. got the water and sewer pilot, you've got stick rent, you've got parking revenues. Right. Um, and then you also have non-tax revenues, sorry, not non-tax, um, ticket tax revenues sort of on the side as a, an available stream of revenues. And then Metro's non-tax non revenue pledge as a backstop. And each of these series is, is secured, we call it on parity, identically with each other. So on the Pinnacle loan, because I was around for that, what are the revenues that were pledged for that? And are they part of this Section 5 pledge of revenues? Yeah, so the, the 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 revenue streams there. So what they came in and and I'm gonna call it um, lent on. I'm gonna call it an unsecured basis. That's not exactly right, but it basically is. 
they didn't get in on that rev- those revenue streams that I just talked about, you know, the, the water and sewer pilot right. uh, team or non-tax revenues. And so what they got were ticket tax revenues, CMA revenues, sort of all of the, loosely speaking, all of the stadium-related revenues that weren't already bundled up and pledged to the payment of your, I'm going to call it your main line, 2012, 2013, 2014 bonds. They had a pledge of those. Um, and so once that... Once we get this done, um, they will, you know, these 21 bonds will, um, the pinnacle loan goes away, 20 bonds come in online, and what you'll be left with are just the 2013 bonds and the 2021 bonds. But my question is, because these were kind of, these were assets of the stadium that we could pledge for the pinnacle loan. I remember this discussion, and there were no other really assets no income stream of the sports authority left and all that got pledged for the pinnacle loan. When the pinnacle loan gets paid out, will the ticket tax, the CMA revenues, these, you know, this income stream that was used to help with the pinnacle loan, is that available to the sports authority or is that part of the revenues pledged for the 2021 bonds? Not not pledged, but available for. Available. Well, because when I look at Section 5, it says pledge of revenues. I'm looking at the resolution. Right, yeah. So let me um, let me pull it up. So when you – when you um, so that pledge of revenues. So what's in pledge there is basic rent, which is TSU rent, project parking revenues is what it is, pilot payments is what it is, um, and, and then other funds under the indenture. That does not include ticket tax revenues, CMA revenues, um, or, or anything that is not expressly TSU rent park, project parking revenues or pilot payments. So, I mean, generally speaking, all of the, I see what you mean, the sports authorities' revenues are available to pay bonds, but they're not right. particularly pledged to this 2021 bond. That's right. That, that, that's right. That's what you're saying? Okay. That, right. That's right. So it's still kind of out there. <laughs> That's right. All right. Okay, thank you. Sure. That was very helpful to me. Thanks, Margaret. Glenn or Frank, any, I know this is there's a lot here. Any questions from you all? Uh, I have none. I'm just listening and learning. Uh, no questions. I mean, um, it's just a refinance and a better rate. So sounds like a no-brainer. Yes, sir. All right, Margaret Darby, I'm going to ask you, I know we have, do we have to vote on all these separately or could we have one resolution to approve every, I, I just want to get your legal opinion here. Uh, my recommendation is to hold a vote for each one separately. Okay, then that's what we shall do. All right, so on the first item, which was the 35 million for the East Bank Stadium, um, do I have a motion to approve a resolution approving the authorization, issuance, and sale of not to exceed $35 million of federally taxable public facility revenue f- refunding bonds, East Bank Stadium Project, Series 2021A of the Sports Authority of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, approving a supplemental indenture relating to the bonds, pledging certain revenues of the authority to repayment of the bonds, approving a refunding escrow agreement and authorizing the preparation and distribution of an official statement in connection with the sale of bonds. Do I have a motion for all that? I make approval. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right. We will have a roll call vote. Margaret Bem. Aye. Glenn Farner. Glenn, looks like you're off mute now. Hi, can you hear Thanks, me? Sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sorry. It was- That's okay. Sorry. Frank Harrison. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. All right. I'm going to read through the second one. Um, I'm going to assume there's no questions given. Are there any questions specific to the arena project? I'll, I'll start there. If not, then I'll go read through the motion. Margaret, any questions from you specific to the arena part, the arena bonds? No. 
No. Glenn or Frank? No. Okay. So I'm going to go forward here. I'm going to we'll entertain a motion to recommend approval of a resolution approving the authorization issuance and sale of not to exceed $10 million of federally taxable public facility revenue refunding bonds arena project series 2021 B of the sports authority of the metropolitan government of Nashville and Davidson County approving a supplemental trust indenture relating to the bonds pledging certain revenues of the authority to the repayment of the bonds, approving a refunding escrow agreement and authorizing the preparation and distribution of an official statement in connection with the sale of bonds. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, sir. Second? I'll second. Thank you, sir. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Director Bam. Aye. Director Farner. I think you were there, Frank. Or sorry, Glenn. Thank you. Uh, I thank it's, you, sir. For some reason, it's not. When I hit the unmute button, it's not actually unmuting for a few I seconds. So. I understand, sir. I, I <laughs> do it all day long. And then, uh, Director Harrison. I uh, thank you, sir. All right. Our last item is related to the ballpark bonds. Um, any specific questions around the ballpark project from anyone on the committee? Yeah, I, I'm wondering again when these bonds are mature for the ballpark. I assume there's no change in maturity date like the rest, but when yeah, do they so these, mature? Yeah, so these were 30 year bonds when we issued them in, um, in December of 2013. Uh, and the main reason they're 30 year bonds. You know, a handful of reasons, but one is is the state sales tax increment, that incentive that they offer is a 30 year incentive. And so the idea is let's let's issue the bonds to soak up that incentive for the maximum period. And so these bonds will will match that original schedule. They won't go out. They're not being extended or shortened. What what was the initial amount of these bonds? And 2013. 65 million. So this is 62 million. So over the past seven years, I know, have we made $3 million worth of progress? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> is that? Mm -hmm. Hi, this is, uh, this is Michelle Bosch. Um, I interject. Yes, please. Um, thank you. Hi. Um, so I wanted to give you some clarity. Yes, uh, just so that you know, because these are 30 year bonds, uh, they are heavier on the interest portion on the front end of the timeline, just like they would be for traditional mortgage. And so uh, the big part of those payments have been interest payments. Um, just like a, a traditional appointment uh, mortgage, as you get later into the years, uh, the interest amount will decrease and the amount of principal amount will increase. Um, and, and that's why you're looking at the difference there. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, familiar with amortization schedules on 30 years. Uh, I just, uh, what was the interest rate on the, the mortgage, uh, these bonds initially versus what they are now again? Can you tell me? So right now, the 2013 A ballpark have a yield of about 4.5%. Um, and that's what's left uh, on the amortization schedule. And this current refinanced rate is what? Uh, the current TIC is about a 335. Okay. And so this, once again, the maturity date is not changing on these bonds, right? So. Correct. All right. So there'll be 2043. Am I looking at that right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so just so uh, we're clear, um, the intention is not to uh, create balloon debt for the sports authority. Uh, we are keeping in line with um, what Metro has done in the past, which is maintain the amortization schedule timing 
uh, but take advantage of debt service savings and particularly the front end of the transaction where uh, currently, um, as you already know, the ballpark is really not making any money uh, because of COVID. Uh, so we're going to try to take advantage of some savings up front to help cover um, so that the debt service in the next year or two are not as um, heavy as they have been on Metro because uh, that is the backstop for these bonds, the Metro government. Um, so we're easing that pain a little bit, but we're also doing that through uh, savings on the interest rate, not through extending the maturity or modifying the, the call schedule of the bonds. Well, that seems really prudent and smart. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, uh, and well, this is Jeff Oldham. While you guys were talking, I, I checked. You guys have paid off about six million dollars of these bonds since they were issued. Yeah. Um, and the sixty-two, you know, this is what bond people do. You, you know, these are we call them sometimes parameter resolutions, and so they're they authorize bonds within certain parameters. And one of those is the maximum par amount. And you can imagine, we always add a little cushion in there um, so that we don't, you know, inadvertently, you know come in too small. So the actual bond deal will probably be, you know, just over 60 million, not 62. And so that, that better matches up that $6 million of payoff. I, I appreciate you checking that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I have no other questions. Thank you, Margaret. Any other questions, Frank or Glenn? No. All right. All right. Yeah, you know, so the chair, so we'll entertain a motion to recommend approval of a resolution approving the authorization, issuance, and sale of not to exceed 62 million of federally taxable public facility revenue refunding bonds, ballpark project, series 2021C of the Sports Authority of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, approving a supplemental trust indenture related to the bonds pledging certain revenues of the authority to the payment of the bonds, approving a refunding escrow agreement and authorizing the preparation and distribution of an official statement in connection with the sale of the bonds. Do I have a motion? I move approval. Thank you, Margaret. Do I have a second? I second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Director Bam? Aye. Director Farner? Aye. And Director Harrison? Aye. Excellent. Thank you all. All right. That is the last of our items needing approval this morning. Now we're going to have an update from Nissan Stadium. And I believe Bob Flynn is going to get us started this morning. Um, actually, I, I can get us started this morning. This is Shannon Myers. Bob is on the phone and um, as well, but just first wanted to introduce myself as this is my first meeting speaking to this group. Um, again, my name is Shannon Myers. So I'm the new vice president of finance for the Titans and just started last month. Um, so I'll be going through these slides with you guys today. Um, so thank you and welcome Shannon. Yes, thank you. So we can we'll go over this financial overview here um these you know this information was provided last week ahead of time so i'll try to make my comments brief and hit on the highlights but you know if any time you have questions please stop me um, and let me know so of this powerpoint deck of these um the financial overview the ticket user fee fund and the capital fund that overview is on pages um three through nine and is just an update of where we currently stand on each of these items. So I don't think I need to go into this into detail unless there were any questions um, on this. I'll focus my comments more so on the last slide, on slide 10, um, and just give you an update on our capital projects and the capital communication tool that was provided last week. So here, just one, oh, was there a question? Sorry. Um, so on this slide, just wanting to give an overview of the changes since last meeting when this information was communicated. So um, these are the capital improvements to Nissan Stadium. Our, our current receivable is at approximately 23.4 million um, and, and no changes, no um, reimbursements from last meeting, but wanted to kind of go through the changes to this and focus on that. 
and then also focus on just those anticipated projects that um, wanted to get in front of you you all proactively and let you know what is in the pipeline for our stadium. So of these changes um, since last meeting, we did complete two projects, um, but had no changes, no additional amounts were incurred. Um, we in incurred what we had expected to incur, which was communicated last meeting. So of the two projects that were completed this month, no, no additional dollars spent there. Um, these, the 639,000, those additions, that relates to three projects. Um, again, that were projects that had been communicated um, and were anticipated. This is just additional expenses that we have incurred. So it was our water filtration system, um, a point of sale contactless item, and then COVID-19 projects. So um, that 639, thousand dollars approximately relates to just additional invoices that we've incurred on those three projects but again those expenses are in line with our expectations in line with what we have previously communicated to you um what i do want to focus on are the additional anticipated projects that we have and we have added i think there was another um document that had that if, if we want to pull it up we i can hit on the high points um maybe the next Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, the last page of this, perfect. Was there an attachment to this? This, yep, and it's very small print, so. <laughs> so here, again, just wanted to hit on, these are items that we do anticipate um, happening, and in that proposed timeline column, that fifth column, um, we've added our proposed timeline of when we anticipate to incur these. So, you know, some of these aren't until later months, um, but just wanted to be proactive with the committee and getting these in front of you. Um, again, these are all items that we believe are covered under our lease, um, lease with the, with Metro, but wanted to make sure that we gave ample communication of these items. Um, the timing may change, that proposed timeline in there may change, but this is what we anticipate right now. So uh, overall, there are nine projects that are in the pipeline that we anticipate. Um, for approximately $1 million. So these dollars, we haven't incurred any expenses here yet. Um, this is just proactively communicating what is on the pipeline. Um, and those two, um, the two items on the top, the April items, um, those are, are ones that are x-ray machines. Those are items that um, the NFL is now, it's a stadium requirement. And the touchless turnstiles are additional items that from a stadium equipment and COVID-19 perspective, we're, we're looking to add. So those are the two that would be in April and the remaining would be later down in May and June. So this is where I just wanted to make sure we were proactive and communicated. And um, if you had any questions on these anticipated items before we moved forward with anything. John, I have a question. Uh, yes. So I'm having a little bit of hard time seeing, like you said, but I really always appreciate uh, the Titans bringing these anticipated costs to us and welcome to you, by the yes, way. Thank you. Shannon, it's really great to have you. But these turnstiles are projected, am I right, $440,000, is that right? That's the Correct. quote you have. Yes. This is not NFL mandated, is that is that is that right? The first one is that you mentioned, the x-ray machines, but not the turnstiles, right? Correct, yes. So kind of take me through, um, this is, you know, quite a bit of money, why, what these are and why you are going to install these. Yeah, um, yeah. so additional turnstiles, I mean, we're anticipating to be at full capacity. So this would allow for, you know, during a full stadium, we would have one turnstile per magnetometer. Um, and this is something that our stadium, you know, um, our stadium events folks believe is a is a very meaningful add to um, you know help with the flow of our um, flow of fans. So it would be at gates one through six, and these would be um, hardwired. So and are there no are there no that's helpful. Questions? No, no yes, that's helpful. Yes. Thank you. So you know a lot of this is really efficiency. This would you know free up staff, so we would have one. So. Any other questions, Margaret? No, thank you. Anything else, anyone from the committee? 
right, Jenna, continue, I guess. We have more things to. Yeah, no, I mean, those are my prepared remarks, just wanting to go through these um, projects with, with the committee proactively. So that's all that I have, um, unless there are any other questions. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the committee? All right, hearing none, I guess that's all. Thank you so much and welcome again, Shannon. Thank you. All right, that concludes our agenda. Uh, I'd like to thank the members of the board, the Sports Authority staff, Metro Legal and Finance, our facilities teams representative and the project managers for all your input and discussion today. Uh, is there any other business before we make a motion to adjourn? All right. Um, do I have a motion? Oh, well. I have a question. Yes, um, and this probably really goes to the whole board, but uh, this is to Margaret Darby. Uh, I mean, I, I think there's some anticipation that the governor's executive order, which allows us to meet virtually, might expire. Uh, and can you give us some sense of what you know about whether or not we'll be meeting in person down the road and when? Um, the current governor's executive order, I believe, expires at the end of April. And I have not heard uh, any word about whether that executive order would be extended. This is the executive order that allows us to meet virtually, uh, whether that executive order would be extended or not at this time. If it's not extended, then we would uh, have to go back to in-person meetings in order to comply with um, the you know, state law for open meeting for the Open Meetings Act. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yes, I mean, I think uh, I assume everybody is is thinking about what that might mean next month and where we would meet and that kind of thing. But I know Monica will do that. We've been at this a while and <laughs> I was just wondering what the, what the status of that was. So thank you. Thanks, Margaret. Any other items? All right, the full board meeting will be at 1030. You're welcome to stay logged in. Just mute yourself. And if I hear nothing else, then do I have a motion to adjourn? Move we'll adjourn. Thank you very much. Everybody, talk to everybody at 1030. Thank you.